Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Minwi Metri. If we learn from the Buddha, most lessons are the same and they have the same types of messages. Uh, and the Buddha's messages were usually evolved um, around the basics of the Dharma. And I wanted to talk about some of the basics that I think all Buddhists need to uh, be familiar with and, and understand that it's a, a foundational part of, of what we practice. Um, and I call it the rule of fours personally, um, because we have this four, eight, and 12 that are awesomely important when we talk about the Dharma. Of course, when we talk about fours, we talk about the four noble truths right? So it, while we could go into great detail about that, I'm going to talk more about the 12 here in a minute. But while we talk about the fours, it's very simple, actually. There is suffering. There's a reason for suffering. Usually that's greed, hate, and delusion that gets us grasping on the things, right? Um, there's a way to end suffering. And that, in, that way to end suffering is following the Noble Eightfold Path. So then there's the eight. At the end of the four comes the eight, Right. And so the way I always taught when I used to teach Dharma class to young children uh, at a temple in California, uh, the way I always taught the uh, Noble Eightfold Path was by the little um, uh, mnemonic device that I would teach them visa, let them see. So if you're traveling to a foreign country and you got a visa in your passport, you got to let them see. So it's visa, let them see, all right? So you'll see that as I follow through this, right? So we have V, right view. I, right intent. S, right speech. A, right action. So we just spelled visa, okay? Now let them see. Let, it starts with an L, right? So we have right livelihood. And then I got um, that's them without the TH, right? So we got um, we got E, right effort. And then the M is right mindfulness. And finally, the C is right concentration. And that's the path that the Buddha taught us that if we will live our lives according to the Noble Eightfold Path, we will be able to figure out that tricky part of ending suffering. That's how the Buddha organized his thoughts after his own enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. But then there's another fourth, another, uh, number of four that comes on after eight. Four, eight plus four is 12. And the Buddha's principal teaching about how we get stuck in this realm of samsara, how we get stuck between birth and, and death and aging in between and suffering all, ar all around is what he coined as the 12 links of dependent origination sometimes called dependent arising. But there are 12 things there that the Buddha taught us that were fundamental as to how we get trapped in this cycle of samsara. And he taught us that if we can learn to break that link, we can end that cycle of samsara. And that's what the Buddhas are able to do. And so understanding this law or these 12 steps of uh, these 12 links of dependent origination is, is just this. It's we learn from this how because one thing exists, something else arises from it, right? It has a lot to do. Nagarjuna, who was also kind of known in the Mahayana world as kind of the second Buddha, only because he was a great philosopher of the things that the Buddha taught. Nagarjuna talked a lot about uh, these 12 links of dependent arising um, or dependent origination. And he talked about them, in, as you can guess, kind of in this idea of emptiness. But his concept of these 12 links is that nothing exists by itself. They all are interconnected. And that's what he meant. That's what he meant when he talked about emptiness is that nothing exists by itself free of any other cause. It all has something else that brings it into being. So let's talk 
little briefly, I won't make this a long Dharma talk, but let's talk briefly about what are these 12 links of dependent origination. It starts before our birth and it's, and that start is ignorance. So the first one is ignorance. And this is ignorance as it means, uh, as the Buddha talked about it, and it means an, a lack of understanding or a misunderstanding of what the Four Noble Truths teach. So that's the ignorance. The next thing is volitional formations. And volitional formations all stem from ignorance. And these are karmic actions, whether they're physical, verbal, or mental, um, that driven by ignorance lead us to future consequences. So those two things right there are kind of the pre-birth realm of these 12 links. And then we come into consciousness. When we are born, we have consciousness. Uh, and consciousness arises out of the result of these karmic formations or these volitional formations that bring us into existence. And then because we're born, we start to learn. And when we learn, we place a name and a form together. And he calls that name and form. So name and form is the fourth element of these 12 links. And you can, you can imagine that anytime you have a feeling, a perception, a volition, a contact, or an attention, we give a name to it. Uh, I can hold up my mouse and we say, oh, something that looks like that and has a little rollerball and you move it around, it's called a mouse. We give, we give that form a name. We do that about all things in existence. And that's what brings us in to this from being conscious to being human as we name things we start to have a language that goes along with things and then we have our six sense bases and we chant about these when we chant the heart sutra but we have these five physical sense organs the eye the ear the nose the tongue the body and then the sixth one is called the mind and from these six six sense bases then we start to learn more things because of the sixth one which is called contact so we have contact with things and what happens when we have contact with it we feel it we taste it we see it we hear it we think about it, whatever it it affects us when we have contact with things so then us this consciousness gets associated with all these things that we start to experience in the world around us and when we have that contact we have feeling so number seven is feeling we feel those things, whether it's pleasure or pain, or as the Buddha, Buddha says, there's only three ways to feel something. You either feel pleasure, you feel pain, or you feel neither pleasure nor pain, which we kind of call neutral nowadays, but the Buddha described it as neither pleasure nor pain, but we still feel it, right? And then because we feel things, we crave things. We either crave that feeling again. We crave that taste again. Anybody have a favorite Ben and Jerry's ice cream, maybe? Or in the South, we have Bluebell ice cream. And you got a favorite one and you just, you crave it. You're like, oh, wow, I'm in the grocery store and I see that homemade vanilla ice cream from Bluebell. And I'm like, oh, I got to have that one. Or maybe you really like the Cherry Garcia or something from Ben and Jerry's. You just crave it. You want more of it, right? That's what craving is. You want more of it. And so that comes about because we have feelings. And then the Buddha taught us that the ninth thing was clinging or attachment. And then we grow attached to something, right? Some of us grow attached to things that are immaterial. We grow attached to our own identity, right? We say, oh, I'm a doctor. I'm a professor. I'm a lawyer. I'm an engineer. I'm an accountant. I'm a mechanic. And we identify ourselves with something. We get attached to some identity. And that's a mental thing, but it's attachment. We get attached to our dog. We get attached to our family. We get attached to um, being able to go to the grocery store and have that Ben and Jerry's and we want it again. We're attached to it. There's all kinds of things that happen in life that make us attached to things or we cling to them. So that's the ninth thing. The 10th thing is becoming. And so the Buddha described this is that when you're conditioned by clinging, Becoming is the active process of propelling you into being. So that starts these karmic wheels at motion that, oh, I really like that. 
I, 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 I want to feel that again. I want to do that again. Oh, I really hope that I can climb Mount Everest or, oh, you know what? I went to uh, Machu Picchu and I really want to see that again. And so it becomes this, we're so attached to things that we think, oh, I want to experience that all over again. And that experience and all over again is what leads to our rebirth because we think, oh, we weren't done with life. I loved life. I loved living despite the suffering, despite the pain. I like the joy from it, or I like the attachments that I have to it. And that leads to becoming. And then, of course, as the Buddha says, that round of things leads us back to number 11, which is birth. And finally, number 12, which is old age and dying, or old age and death. So we have this circle that starts with ignorance and ends with old age and death. And once old age and death come, we're still in that cycle. Boom, we come back to ignorance again because we don't fully understand the four noble truths. And off we go on that cycle all over again. So the Buddha has taught us in the four noble truths. He taught us this is the truths of the world, that this is the truth of samsara. And in the eight Fold Noble Path, he teaches us this is the way to get out of that path of samsara. And then he tells us that whole cycle of samsara is in the 12 links, those 12 links of dependent origination. But because he taught us the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path, he taught us how to break the links of that chain in the 12 in that, in that 12 links of dependent origination. So while we're here on earth, in a living body, there are two real places that we can really start to break that if we understand the Buddhist teachings. We can break it in the craving, or we can break it in the attachment. When you gain that wisdom, instead of ignorance, that leads us back into rebirth, when you gain that wisdom, you learn how to break the craving and the attachment. And that's what all Buddhas have learned to do. They've learned to break the craving and the attachment. That craving for more, that attachment to feeling, that attachment to, uh, to allowing someone to hurt your feelings, allowing someone to make you so excited that you want to be, you want to experience that over and over again. So it takes a powerful mind to learn to understand these things. But when we do understand them, we understand the things that the Buddha teaches us. So when unpleasant things arise, we don't condemn them. And when neutral things arise, we're not forgetful. The Buddha said that the way of forgetfulness is the way of death. So we're mindful, right? Isn't mindfulness the opposite of forgetfulness? So that's what the Buddha was teaching us. So we learn all these things. Back to the Noble Eightfold Path. What was the let M see? The M is mindfulness. And as we live a life of mindfulness, we learn how to break the, path, the 12 links of dependent origination. The Dharma is simple. 4, 8, 12. You learn that, you know the Dharma. Thank you. <laughs>